Okay, so what we want to do here is to make a quick uh, tour, tour explanation of what key signing is. I know many of you know it very well. Uh, This. Uh, who is here for the first time taking part of a key signing party? Okay, several people. Okay, uh, uh, you you did send. Uh, well, I know I'm, uh, we're, we cannot go case by case, but we are uh, starting from the assumption that you got the file from Anibal, the 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 file that he put in his. Uh, People Debian org space and it's something like uh, <laughs> something like yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah it should work now I'm resetting my outputs once and twice. The surrender. No, okay, let's go with your computer. It will be easier. <laughs> Providing it still works. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, uh, has some one of you not downloaded a file from people Debian org slash tilde anival slash something slash ksp dot, dot, uh, dot uh, p, uh, txt? Somebody didn't download it. Okay, uh, people that didn't download it really, 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 really uh, should think over if they are participating in the, the key signing or they should uh, uh, wait uh, to, to like properly uh, understand and get, the, get the, 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 the procedures because this is, well, something important for each of us. And uh, we, we, we need you to already know that the file you have is valid. What we're going to do now is to check if each of you got exactly the same file. The, the, the thing is, uh, we're not just certifying each other in person. Uh, uh, we're not exchanging fing fingerprints, but we are agreeing on a document that already has a magic number. That magic number is uh, the result of a cryptographic operation done over the whole of it. Right, so uh, yeah, yeah. Are we, are we going to ask people to read our digits? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think uh, that will be the the, the best idea. Uh, uh, so, people that that have uh, uh, their key signing party uh, uh, sheets printed, uh, please uh, start from that side onwards. Each one of you reading one digit of the SHA. Preferably not from your printout, preferably from the shard that you're calculating on your computer. That you calculated, yeah. So, so uh, point at someone in your start. Yeah, top Je left. Jeremy. Next. Okay, going this way, who is the first one to have? I know, but, uh, but, uh, but we can only check those people that do have it. Sven. <laughs> okay, next, 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 next. Okay. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Three. 
A, C, Seven, three, B, D, F, one. Okay. <laughs> so, are we reasonably uh, sure that this is the right number? I think I missed one. <laughs> Thank okay. You. The reason for this, and, and the reason to do it, uh, Mori suggested to do it in a distributed way, is that often if we don't have uh, checked this number ourselves, for example, you, you, you are not sure if I did it because I was reading it from a paper. Uh, I, I, uh, if I did not check this myself, well, uh, the file may, uh, I have may be different from yours, or my signature, uh, my, my fingerprint on that file may be different from, uh, from what uh, you all have. So once we have agreed on this, uh, well, I'll, uh, we ca you can later grab one of these papers. Please remember to put your name on it so you remember it's yours and uh, whatnot. And this is meant to make it easier so you don't have uh, 10 pages of uh, text with you, just uh, one. But this is no replacement for the, keys, uh, for the text uh, you already have. That's where each of the, uh, the fingerprints are. Uh, now, what, what are we going to do? We're not going to have a key signing party in the traditional, boring, long sense. We're not going to start a queue and checking each other's identity. Each one of us will have different criteria on which to sign the, the key of a, another person. And uh, the best way to do this is not to just start uh, checking documents, but to uh, do so in, well, to, to chat a bit, to get to know the person, but because that's the only way the, the identity will really re remain like uh, fixed uh, to our brains. Uh, Pollito doesn't trust anybody. I, I know, poor little bird, but well, uh, we have to bear with him uh, as uh, the, the reason for, for us to lock him ar uh, around the world is that he's he doesn't trust the, the airline carriers to buy his own plane tickets. So, uh, uh, well, I was uh, in the other session, I was telling about some ideas I've been uh, playing with and I, I want you to consider at least. Uh, uh, although Ashish did uh, an interesting uh, observation to what I uh, suggested. Uh, I suggest uh, you consider expiring uh, signatures. Say, I, I know some of you for a very long time and uh, I know that I will still remember you in a long time, but uh, people that we have not known so f so, uh, for so long, well, maybe we, we should sign for a short, uh, short amount, maybe we should sign, create signatures for three years, that's uh, what I suggest, and uh, renew them later on. What Ashish said is that uh, GPG doesn't uh, really allow for that, so we, we have to really triple check that at some point, but it does allow for e expiring signatures. I think uh, uh, we, we should do it. Um, uh, uh, well, my computer is not uh, video enabled right now, but uh, maybe you can. There's a GPG option Ask search, uh, ask, ask search expire. Uh, if you say this to GPG, it will ask you how long do you want a key to be uh, a key signature to be valid for. I have put this in my uh, both my GPG.conf and my CAF GNUPG home GPG.conf. Uh -huh. uh, so if you're using CAF, remember to use. Uh, Yep. 
uh, remember to to use it, to do that as well. Yeah, well, uh, sorry? Yeah, uh, Vidal is asking what's the point of expiring signatures. Uh, the thing is, uh, I will most probably remember your face 10 years from now if, if I don't see you from, from now to then, but it's not the case of everybody. And uh, as this is the source of uh, the only link to the real world identities we have, uh, if you check in your, uh, in your uh, in what you have signed so far, you will probably find many p people you don't rem remember who they are. So you're still asserting their identity today. Uh, right. the, the, the problem with your assertion is just because I don't remember their face in 10 years, it doesn't invalidate the fact that I went to some effort to validate the relationship between their key material and their real world identity at the time we signed. Mm -hmm. So while I understand your point about we don't always remember people forever, to me, once I've engaged in sort of the protocol that I require for uh, giving someone a signature on their key, I don't see how time invalidates that. Right, I mean, it, it's a personal, uh, a personal policy. Uh, well, uh, what I showed in my previous talk uh, goes about how I think this maps with uh, reality, with, with uh, what we have seen in the evolution of our key ring. But again, um, uh, this is not something we will ever require. It's, this is something I suggest. Yeah, my, uh, my, my point was overlapped with what Fidel just said, but it also includes a suggestion. So yeah, first of all, in the other session, you did say that uh, your interpretation of what a signature means is at this point in time, that person controls the key, um, even if, I remember you in several years, which again, I think is likely. Um, uh, it does not mean that I have any evidence that in several years time you control the right. same key, but in several years time, it has not stopped being true that you did control it several years prior. So instead of having a time limited signature or, or uh, revoking old signatures, I think it makes sense between now and three years from now to teach GPG mm -hmm. uh, how at the user's discretion whether that being adopted as a policy or not, uh, to ignore old signatures. And then we would still not necessarily have to see each other, but I would have to have some way of knowing that in 2019, you controlled the key at that point. But mm -hmm. I would not need to see your ID. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, yeah, uh, you're completely right. And that's part of what uh, I was talking with uh, Ashish uh, right now. Uh, I think Jonathan was uh, wanting to ask as well. Uh, so, so yeah, there's, uh, there's just the, f the first time I'm, I'm like uh, widely floating this idea, and I do expect well several frictions to to appear with it, but uh, I think uh, there, there, there's uh, it's worth exploring. This. So, so there is some disagreement about the, the validity, not the validity, the the usefulness of this even within keyring mains. Um, uh, DKG's position is a signature is an assertion that at a point in time um, all of his procedures were complied with in a way that he was happy to sign the key, but DKG from 2011 is different to DKG from 2016, and his policies may have changed, and an expiry offers him the opportunity to, to reassert that his procedures have still been met and he is still happy with the signature on that key, um, which is a valid viewpoint. Um, mm -hmm. I think the thing is that anyone who's looking at doing certificate expiry and, and wants to do the signature expiry, the tools are terrible. So the risk from my point of view is if people start doing this without committing to being, updating their signatures and re-signing keys, we will have a web that falls apart because we right. will have all expired signatures. So I personally am not engaging in this at present. I can see some benefit to it if people want to play with it be aware that unless you make a concerted effort, say you choose a three-year expiry, in three years' time, you need to go back and look at your signatures again, or things start to fall apart mm -hmm. in, in unuseful ways. So there is a commitment, a long-term commitment, if you want to engage in this. There is some benefit if you want to be able to, say, update your key signing policies in the future. Um, but time will tell. Um, and, and I certainly think that signatures like me 10 years ago were still cryptographically strong. And, and therefore still valid as I identified these people and, and whatever. So 
Um, it, it's a choice thing, um, and it's an awareness of there are some potential benefits, I suppose. Should you repeat the protocol of the key signing process? Yeah, yeah uh, well, uh, as you suggested earlier, maybe we can we can uh, exchange his signature here sure. for, for all to see, uh, for, for the people who have not... Uh, kind of complicated for me to sign people's keys, though. <laughs> um, <coughs> the basics of the protocol are, we all agreed on this hash. We all downloaded this text file and calculated the hash in that... Can you repeat? And checked our own signature. Well, yes, as, as I was going to say. That's what I'm busy explaining. Um, when you've downloaded that file, you check that your key appeared in it correctly, that the fingerprint of your key was the fingerprint of the key you control. When you want to sign someone's key, you verify that their name matches the person you're talking to, however you choose to do that. And yeah, people have different protocols on this. Some people yeah. look at and documents. Some yeah, e each person will have different... Uh, Trust levels. For example, I, I was about to tell you, well, uh, if we haven't uh, cross-signed yet, you, you're free to tell me, well, I, I'm not si signing based on this because I, I don't have my passport on me. Most people uh, trust uh, on, their pas on the other person's passport as, I mean, that w that's my only valid uh, ID here in South Africa as a Mexican. So I, I can just produce these two uh, documents, which may be sufficient for somebody and not for somebody else. So uh, tell me, are you OK by signing uh, my key based on this? I'm happy to sign your key without seeing those, because I've known you That's for great. several DevCons. Yeah, I, I, I often don't uh, check the identity of people I can already recognize. But uh, well, it's, uh, it's not uh, bad to, for, for each of you to set their own levels of trust. Um, so you verify the person's identity. And either using one of these cheat sheets, you note that they say they've checked the fingerprints and they've checked their key's fingerprints. I mean, they've checked the signature of the file, or the hash of the file. They've checked their key, key's fingerprints in the file. And you put another checkbox in the bit that you're happy with their identity. So I check that. Um, Please say. Uh, sure. I could try and use this document camera. Oh. You see oh, these nice. things? They're very fancy. Wow. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay. Wow. So this copy belongs to Stefano Rivera. I have verified that that hash is the correct hash. Um, I have verified that my key is correctly in there, and have you verified that your key I is I verified my key is correct. Okay, and you verified the hash in this presentation? Of course, I, I verified the hash just uh, some minutes ago. Okay. I gonna well, no, I didn't check it at this presentation. I checked it before, but I, I did check it. Gunnar has verified the fingerprints. He's verified his ID. At that point, I'm happy to go off and sign his key later, which I have to do offline, unfortunately. Okay, so I will try to get my computer to output video by this thing because I can sign your key from my home machine. But um... <laughs> shall we put that down? <laughs> oh, do you want that? Yeah. yeah. I, okay. I, yes. I cannot output video, but uh... well, I, I think we're actually five minutes over time now. It is the end of the day, isn't it? Or was there one more? No, there's another speaker. Oh. So if anyone wants to watch Gunnar sign a key, it's very exciting. I <laughs> really, really, this is like one of the best bits of Debian. Um, <laughs> but, uh, oh, okay. Can I make a suggestion that I thought of as a tweak to the long line key signings, but we could probably apply it here somehow, which uh, in the past it struck me that the problem with the long line key signings is that the, uh, you can get the signatures from the weakest link in the key signing. Mm -hmm. So someone that's a complete idiot and doesn't check anything will sign everybody's key. And it would be nice if the, we raised the bar a bit and made it so that it was something closer to the, the most paranoid person's standards that were applied. 
So if you had a long line and when you saw someone's ID was total nonsense, you shouted out the number of the person that you weren't going to sign, then the next people would be much more suspicious, much more suspicious of that ID. So if, if you see ID and you have a good reason to be suspicious of it, I think we should collect that information. Because if someone presents me with a dodgy looking UK passport, I will probably spot it. But I won't spot the problem with, I don't know, an Argentinian passport and vice versa. So we have some people that are quite expert at assessing this stuff. If we collected whenever anybody actually had good reason to be suspicious, then that might tempt people not to trust that ID after all, even though it looked okay to them at the time. Anybody think that's fair enough? Are you going to hit enter? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry then.